Hello. Hello and good morning. How are you doing today, Steve? Pretty good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Dude, I really want to thank you for creating Teen Year Old Tom because so many of us are watching this and we see not only ourselves, but we see people that are in our relationships as, as we grow in this society. I just, I love to embrace this on Max. That's great. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Is uh, as crazy as the show is, it's all grounded in, in reality and the way people treat each other. Uh, so I'm glad to pick up on that. One of the things that this show does is that it really does kind of put us in a situation of what would I do? And I love it when writers do that because you you, you look at yourself in the mirror or you, you basically look at yourself just sitting down the sofa watching 10-year-old Tom and you go, what would I do? And and, and is that what you do when, you, when you're starting to put the stories together? Absolutely. Hopefully that happens at every big turn in the show. My writing tends to be based on logic and exactly what you said. What would the character do naturally? Nothing contrived, nothing silly, nothing unbelievable. It's just the premise of what he's been thrown into. There is no good answer. Mm -hmm. It's a weird spot to be in. And since he's a naive young kid who doesn't know any better, he often either makes the wrong choice or trusts and believes people a little too much. So there's hopefully a groundedness to every turn here. It's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Wrong as it is, it kind of makes sense. Would you say that he's the black sheep of the family, the the oddball kid that's that just happens to be liked, and there are some that are bothered by him, but you know, deep inside they still like Tom. I don't know if he's a black sheep. He, he's kind of the normal one. He's got a pretty messed up family and people doing pretty strange things. So uh, even though he gets blamed for a lot of things, uh, he can always defend himself and he can always point the finger to someone else. So I try to try to treat him as this blank slate, this middle ground. He's just, uh, a lot of the stories just pass through him. He's not necessarily doing anything wrong himself. At least that's the way he sees it. Listeners need to understand that before you got into the animation that it, and the, the TV show, uh, Ten Year Old Tom, is that you came from the world of advertising. My God, what was it like to write copy with you? Because with your imagination and what we're seeing on TV right now, this has to be the adventure of your life. <laughs> yeah, I actually had a good run in advertising because I did a lot of Budweiser commercials. It was very entertainment driven, just kind of writing characters, really. I did a lot of Super Bowl commercials with the Budweiser and the Lizards and that kind of stuff. So uh, my first voice thing was a Clydesdale commercial where I played a donkey who <laughs> always dreamt of being a Clyde. So, you know, it wasn't that different from what I ended up doing in TV. It kind of paved the way because uh, I think people picked up on my strong suit. It was in writing dialogue. It was in quickly creating characters that you felt like you knew and liked and cared about. So if you can do that in 30 seconds, it's even easier to do it in a half hour. Uh, but yeah, it really, really paved the way for all of this. Becoming the voice of Tom, was it something that you had to create on your own and develop that style, or was it you knew what Tom was going to sound like from the very beginning? Yeah, it's really just me talking. Any voice I've ever done is some version of what you're hearing right now. Mm -hmm. I don't really much of a character on i don't think about this stuff at all it's there was really no no backup plan no nothing it was just i'll start talking and that's the show <laughs> uh you know it took me a while to get to that point i didn't always have the confidence to think i was a voice actor but you know one thing leads to another and before you know it people encourage you and uh, with a little with a little encouragement i was off to the races and now now i'm a living, working uh, voice actor. Well, speaking of voice acting, you, you, the uh, 10-year-old Tom has has basically become a platform for so many other actors. I mean, you've opened that door. It's fun to sit there and listen to the voice going, is that so-and-so? And then and then you go and do the research. Oh, my God, they're on this show, too. Yeah, I've been so happy with the actors that we get. It, it's always surprising. Uh, it started with Malkovich when we reached out, and I was almost as a joke. All right, might as well, might as well ask them. Uh and then when he said yes, it was really encouraging and, and validating that he responded to the writing. So we just kept asking people like that. Before you know it, you know, new companies in and, uh, you know, Jennifer Coolidge. Yes. And, you know, Bob Lennon. We got a long list. Of, it's uh, 
it's so much fun getting to meet half these people, let alone work with them. <laughs> uh, it's, I feel really lucky that I get to do that. If 10-year-old Tom could host his own podcast, what would it be like? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. He'd, he'd probably just be uh, trying to make sense of it all and, <laughs> and wondering why everyone around him is so crazy except him. I think he would uh, have a lot of questions. He would have a <laughs> He's probably finally be putting people on the spot saying, what What the hell is wrong with you? I don't think he'd be doing this when he's 10, but yeah, years from now, maybe that's a good good podcast, looking back on it all, and uh, all the damage everyone did to him. Man, I want to congratulate you on 10-year-old Tom, man, and I just can't wait to watch more episodes and watch you grow as a writer and as an animator, sir. You guys be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> 